Hi, I'm Willie. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for being here. If you're a first time viewer, please go down and click subscribe. If you need IT consulting, go to WillieHow.com, fill out that contact form and someone will be with you as soon as possible. Um, it, no matter whether you're new or you're returning, thank you very much. I do appreciate each and every one of you. Now, what we're going to talk about today are subnet masks. And the reason that I felt compelled to do this video is several times over the last uh, week or two, there has been some confusion with subnet masks, either on projects or people asking questions or something like that. So I wanted to talk just a little bit about subnet masks. I'm going to give you a little few nuggets to go, you know, doing your own research on. So first of all, the first thing you need to know is that a subnet mask is not something that Willie Howe made up. This is a standard. OK, and the standard uh, that you're looking for was created by the IETF, which is the Internet Engineering Task Force. And subnets are defined in RFC, which is Request for Comment 917, and it's Internet subnets. So if you want all of the juicy details about subnets and how they came up with everything, go look up RFC 917. OK, and then if you want to know even more about subnetting, what you can do is you can look up RFC 950, which is the Internet Standard Subnetting Procedure. We're going to do some subnetting on the channel, um, but this is the actual, you know, how it's defined, how it comes together, how it works on the back end. It's the RFC. So before we get too far into subnets, the first thing you've got to remember or know is what a network is. And if you look at the Encyclopedia Britannica definition of a computer network, it is two or more computers connected for the purpose of communicating data electronically. So you've got two or more computers. Now computers, that's a very big subject. Like what is a computer? It could be uh, an actual PC. It could be your smartphone. It could be a car. It could be, I mean, you name something. If it's got a motherboard processor, all those requirements to be a computer, and it needs to exchange data, that's going to count as your computer. So, what does a subnet mask do? So, a subnet mask, it actually defines the boundaries or tells us the size of the subnet that we're working with. So back in the day, you had like classful routing where you had to, you know, route, you know, class A's, B's or C's. It's not like that anymore. We do classes routing. We have VLSM, which is variable length uh, subnet mask. But, you know, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, what a subnet mask is doing is it is telling us the size of our network. So if you're used to like a uh, 255, 255, 255, subnet mask, that provides 254 usable hosts because in any subnet besides a slash 31, which is a, a special, you know, deal altogether, you can't use the first or the last IP address because the first is the network number and the last is the broadcast address. Okay. So how did we get to 254 usable addresses? Well, what you need to do is you need to remember that IP addresses are made up of 32 bits. So you've got four octets, right? So there are eight bit sections in the IP address. So when you turn a bit on, it turns that value on. So if you look at how an IP address is laid out and you look at the eight bits or the subnet mask, let's talk about subnet mask, to get to 255, 255, 2550, when you look at all of those bits, that means the first 24 bits are all turned on. So that is the network portion. What is zeros? That is the host portion, what can be assigned to machines. So how you get 255, 255, 2550 is in that first octet, all those bits are turned on. So when you add all of those values together, you get 255. That's the same in the second and the third octet. Then in the fourth octet, none of the bits are turned on. So you actually have 200 and if you go from zero to 255, it's 256. Because if you look at the placement uh, uh, of the bits inside the octet, we start at 128 and work our way down to one. When you add all those up, you get 256, but you can't use the first or the last. So minus two, now you get uh, two, um, 254 usable addresses. Now, the reason that I wanted to bring this up is because over uh, the last couple weeks, I have seen on several networks 
incorrect subnet mass. And so what that does, we all, you know, if you're on this channel, you know what a router is. You know a router takes a packet that we don't know the address for. So that's the other thing you need to remember about networks is that for computers to directly talk to each other, they either have to be in the same network, so within that same subnet mask, or you have to have a router to get the packets there, right? So that'd be your default gateway out of the network or to another network. If you've got VLANs, your default gateway is going to get you to those VLANs. Either way, if it's not inside the same network, which is defined by that subnet mask, we have to have a way to get to it. And that's where the uh, routers come into play. But what I've seen is people using subnet masks like 255.255.0.0, which is traditionally a class B subnet mask, but that gives you a whole lot more hosts than 254 usable. So what does that do? In an example like 192.168.0.0, when you use a 255.255.0.0 or CIDR notation on that is slash 16, when you use that subnet mask, it allows the host to believe it is in the same network with all of those other hosts from, uh, you know, after the 192.168 because that's the network, right? So everything from 0.0 .0 to 192.168, 255, 255, it now believes it is in the same network with those, right? But we may have 192.168, 1.50 on a different network somewhere over there and we want to get to it. And the default gateway, the router is set up to send to that, but that host, it can't get there. Well, the reason it can't get there is because it believes using that huge subnet mask instead of a class C, the appropriate subnet mask or whatever the appropriately configured subnet mask is, that it is in the same network. So it is trying to directly talk to that 192.168.1 ad uh, address. So you have to make sure that you're using the appropriate subnet masks and that you're doing routing appropriately and all those other things. So there's a lot of other uh, subjects that we can get into with this, such as right sizing your subnets and things like that. And if you wanna know about right sizing subnets, leave that down in the comments and we'll talk about that. And I hope that this cleared up a little bit about what a subnet mask is and why we use them. If I made it more confusing, let me know how I made it more confusing, but I tried to explain it uh, the best that I could. So if you like the video, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe. Please comment and share. Please follow me on Twitter and Instagram. If you need IT consulting, go to willyhow.com. Fill out that contact form and someone will be with you as soon as possible. If you'd like to support the channel by becoming a patron on Patreon, and thank you to those folks, that link is down below. If you'd like to buy any of the gear you see us here use on the channel, uh, our Amazon affiliates and affiliate links and other affiliate links are down below. They don't change your price, but they do kick a couple bucks over to the channel. Once again, I want to thank you for being here. Go check those subnet masks. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.